Hi there everybody, this is David, and we have heard time and time and time again that turn-based RPGs just are not viable in this day and age. Despite, you know, growing up with them, and despite loving them, and despite them selling quite well, it still seems like some of the big boys just don't want to give them to us, and that is super unfortunate. And we've just been suffering as these old classics that we know and love have been turning into action RPGs for quite some time now. The most notable of that being the Final Fantasy franchise, where not only did the 1997 classic get transformed into an action RPG, but the latest edition of the mainline series, Final Fantasy XVI, also became an action RPG too, whereas all the other games before it in the mainline series were turn-based. And hey y'all, if you are a turn-based fan too, please be sure to show your support and your love by liking this video and subscribing, as I'm really, really trying so hard to hit that 80,000 subscriber mark by the end of the year, and I would love your support with that. So, despite my outcry and many other people's outcries, it seems like nobody was like listening to the fans. But then something changed. Last year, we got a game of the year, Baldur's Gate 3, which was just an absolute smash hit, selling well over 15 million copies and winning five different awards, including the coveted Game of the Year award. And guess what? That was turn-based! And not just like normal turn-based, like old-school turn-based. We're talking dice rolling here. So I think that if some companies are finally seeing the light, then we have a gem for you. This is the debut title from Sandfall Interactive, and it's called Player Obscure Expedition 33. And it's a turn-based RPG with real-time combat mechanics coming out for the PS5, the Xbox, and the PC next year in 2025, and it's also going to be available over on the Game Pass. Now, I've got to ask you, do you remember those rumors that came out before the Xbox Showcase? And it was like saying something like, hey, if you're a fan of the Xbox 360 era and those different RPGs, then maybe you should stay tuned for this showcase. There might be something here for you. Yeah, I remember those. And many people thought that, that meant that we were going to be getting a Lost Odyssey remake or a sequel or something that even in regards to like Blue Dragon. Well, unfortunately, those didn't come to fruition, but we might actually be getting something better because we're now getting a brand new game and a brand new IP that is not just going to be locked on one system. It's going to be available for everyone to play. And gosh, these graphics, they are a vibe. Nowadays, it seems like JRPGs come in like one of two different ways. They're either like incredibly bright, charming, cutesy anime, or they're just the polar opposite. And they're ultra realistic, ultra gritty, ultra brown, ultra gray, ultra dark, and ultra ugly. And there's really like nothing in between these two dichotomies. But this one here just bucks that trend. This is inspired by Belle Ecop France which is known as the Beautiful Era, which is also the period of time between the end of the Franco-Prussian War and the outbreak of World War I back in 1914. I know, I'm a history major, I'm a complete dork, and I just know these things. And it just looks absolutely amazing. I, for one, am completely tired of these two main art styles that we keep on seeing and keep on getting, and I have longed for something new and something different, something that bucks that trend. And not only does this graphical style hold its own, but the story and battle system do as well. They're both wholly unique, harkening back to the classics, but still standing on their own two feet. So first, I do want to talk about this battle system. It reminds me so much of Lost Odyssey, as well as The Legend of Dragoon. But I don't want to say that it reminds me of something like maybe, eh, Super Mario RPG. Because it's not just like timed button presses. There's really a whole lot more to it than just that. It is stylized. It is beautiful. And if you recall in Lost Odyssey, you kind of had to like match up those two circles together in order to get your perfect hit. And then in Legend of Dragoon, you had something similar with their addition system, where you line up those two squares in order to deal additional damage with every attack. But here, you're not just attacking. You're going to be dodging and parrying and countering in real time, creating combos and attacking in a rhythm and targeting enemy weak points, utilizing a free aim system. And also, this is key to me. It seems like nowadays RPG developers have some sort of like vendetta against being able to equip your characters. Gone are the days where you're able to equip your weapon and your helmet and your armor and your accessories and your shoes or whatever. 
Nowadays, you're lucky if you can just get like a weapon and an armor and an accessory. But that seems to be changed here, as the website promises your ability to craft unique builds for all of your expeditioners in order to suit your playstyle via customizing their gear, their stats, their skills, and their character synergies. And that just makes me so happy. Y'all have no idea. Then there's this story. I just can't with it. Like, this is super, super, super adult. This is life or death situations. It's giving me like Xenoblade 3 vibes. And there is no way that I can explain the story better than the official website does. So let me just read this to you. It's so freaking cool. It goes, year by year, she erases us. Once a year, the paintress wakes up and paints upon her monolith. She paints her cursed number and everyone of that age turns into smoke and fades away. Year by year, that number ticks down and more of us are erased. Tomorrow, she'll wake up and she'll paint 33. And tomorrow, we depart on our final mission. Destroy the Paintress so she can never paint death again. We are Expedition 33. With only one year left to live, join up with Gustave, Mayel, and their fellow Expeditioners as they embark upon a desperate quest to break the Paintress's cycle of death. Follow the trail of the previous expeditions and discover their fate. Get to know the members of Expedition 33 as they learn to work together against the impossible odds. Like I'm telling y'all, if that is not a gripping story that will have you on the edge of your seat, then I don't know what it is. Everything here just looks absolutely breathtaking. When I first saw this game at the showcase, I got goosebumps. I could not believe what I was seeing. And I keep on telling y'all, we are in the JRPG renaissance, and sometimes I like wait and I find myself waiting for that other shoe to drop, wondering when this renaissance will end. But I am happy to say, I feel like it's not going to be ending anytime soon. So thank you. Thank you so much for watching, and I want to hear all about your thoughts and your comments about this game right here. Talk to me about it down below, because I do want to talk and chat about it with you. And also, if you want to hear about some more games, some more games that are inspired by the greats, those games that are inspired by the Xenoblades, the Legend of Dragoons, and the Lost Odyssey of the World, please be sure to check out this list on seven great spiritual successors. And everybody out there, have a good day.